Welcome to You, Me, and the Dogs, the podcast where we explore the wonderful world of dog ownership. Join me every Wednesday as my guests and I share personal stories, insights, and experiences, of course, with dogs. Hi, my name is Nellie, and I am the host of You, Me, and the Dogs. I have a dog company. <laughs> I have a dog lifestyle company called The Combine Dog, uh, where we started with dog food and single ingredient dog treats. But now we are just fostering the dog human bond. And my guest today is my partner of 20 years, Oscar. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is a filmmaker and editor. Um, and dog dad of Yanko. A dog dad, <laughs> above all, a dog dad. So how was your, what is your experience with dogs? Well, my experience with dogs started off in a very negative way. Um, in the neighborhood that I grew up in, there was, uh, dogs were used mostly as guard dogs. So, you know, like protecting garages and homes and stuff like that. And people had these big intimidating dogs. And then I didn't grow up with a dog because my mom was like, we don't have space here for a dog. So we mostly grew up in apartments. My only experience and relations with dogs were that of guard dogs. So every time I walked by, they were mean, they were growling, they were barking, you know, <laughs> uh, saliva dropping down. It was just oh like, okay, <laughs> terrifying. And then also like, you know, I love movies. And then movies most of the time, well, at least the ones that I like, <laughs> are portraying dogs in like, you know, mean, mean ways. Cause I'm not watching like air butting, that kind of crap. I'm not, I'm not into that. Like I love dogs, but what like Sandlot? Kind of... Sandlot. Well, the it? Sandlot, for example, exactly. It's such a good movie. And in that movie, it's a fucking scary dog. Even though later they find out he wasn't really, you know, that bad. He was just a regular dog that wanted to play. But to kids, and you know, that's the thing. Your imagination starts taking over, right. and you start imagining the worst possible things. So has was there like something that happened that made it even Oof. scarier? Yes, I mean, what? The, take a pick. There's like a couple of them, but the <laughs> one that always stands out the most uh, was when I was like around 10 or 11, where my bus would drop me off. I would still have to walk like six blocks to get to the apartment, and in between there was this garage um, mechanic place that they would fix up cars and. They had this Rottweiler, and that dude was mean. I mean, every time I walked <laughs> by, because I would walk every morning and walk past him every morning, and he would just always be like, rawr, 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 rawr. and I was like, oh, dear God. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, but they always had him chained up in the garage, in the pole, with a pole, and this long metal chain that was just long enough to scare you, but it couldn't like, you know, bite right. you or do anything. So it really was just protecting the garage. I know that now, but at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so one day I come home, get off the bus and I have a, like a red slushy, you know, that I'm like going at it. And you know, we're in Miami, it is hot. So I'm <laughs> scarfing down the slushy. I'm having the time of my life. I'm so happy and giddy. And I completely forget about that dog. And as I'm walking by, he just quickly runs up to me. Rawr, 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 rawr. You know, the metal chain is clinking. It's freaking hectic. <laughs> and he comes right to me like in a movie. He's like inches within me. And of course, I'm afraid. So and I go like that. And in that motion, the slushy falls all over me. So I'm thinking it's blood. I'm thinking he bit into me. That's it. I lost a leg. But, you know, obviously he just scared me a little bit. So but that was a traumatic experience. Then after that, I just kept thinking like, oh, crap. If they get too close, it's, it's going to be over. So you got home with the red slushy? Red slushy, no. And then the funny thing, and then I tell my brother the story, and he just couldn't stop laughing. And then every time, he's like, hey, watch out. Watch out when you hit that corner. <laughs> there could be a dog out there. <laughs> hey. Hello. Hey. What's his name? His Yanko. name is Yanko. Hi, Mako. I'm Coleman. Yanko. You're so pretty. <laughs> You're so pretty. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I bet he wants to be let go so bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's really good off these too, but, you know. I hope you guys have a great walk. There's a bunch of citrus. So how did the experience with Yanko help? Well, <laughs> Yanko... Hmm. 
Yanko came into our lives because, you know. By accident. By accident, yeah. yeah. Your brother got him, and at the time, he had just purchased his home, and he was remodeling yep. it. And so it was not really the safest place for him to be for in. a puppy, and, yeah. yeah. And he was a puppy, so uh, right away, you know, when we're visiting to see how everything is, Nelly sees Yanko, falls in love right away. That's not true. No, I wanted that's to. That's not true? That's not true. Wow. <laughs> it's not true. I wanted to, honestly, to help him out. Um, really, he's a little puppy. Can't really have a puppy in a situation like that. Uh, dogs are very curious, and so that was just a liability waiting to happen. Yeah, no, that's true. So, you know, I did want to help him out. And also knowing his breed, you know. And yeah, sure, eventually I did fall in love with him. Um, and you do. <laughs> so, hold on. You fell in love with him the moment you well, saw there him. Well, no? there was just. <laughs> you told me, and I quote, there's something there's, in his eyes. Yeah, Oscar. there's some, there's a, you know, when you, um, I don't know, when you meet a puppy, there is a connection that you make with them. No, of course, yeah. You know, when I see him, I'm thinking, okay, now he's going to be where, where we're living, and He's gonna be in our bed, he's gonna be in the room, everything's gonna smell like dogs. And then also just the responsibility, he's a puppy, so you have to train him. Now, right. I had never gone through that, but I could assume it's like, you know, dealing with a little baby. And <laughs> I wasn't ready for that, but at the same time, I, di I do agree with you, like there was no choice. Like he was gonna be in an environment that wasn't great. Not that Paul's bad or anything like that. It just, right. you know, he wanted the dog because he's establishing his life at the, at the time. And I guess he almost kind of knew in a way, well, if need be, he can stay with Nelly, you know? Right. And so he can't, he comes over <laughs> and I slowly get acquainted with the uh -huh. dog lifestyle, you know? Like at first we had a cage. A crate. A crate. We had yeah. a crate right next to the bed because I was like, he is not sleeping on the bed. I'm putting my foot down. He's not going to be in the bed. <laughs> Looking back at that now, I really regret it because those were the moments that, you know, he's a puppy and that's where you really create that bond. Right. And I think that's why it's also he's also more closer to you than he is to me. But so in the beginning, like I said, I hadn't grown up with dogs. So my biggest thing was I always thought they were going to come and bite me or like, Nibble on what, in the course, middle of the night? <laughs> right, yeah, no, and of course, you know, they're puppies, so they have the puppy teeth. That's uh -huh. actually the worst time that you're going to feel a bite, you know, right. obviously, if he's really trying to, you know, protect us, the bite is different, but at that time when they're puppies, they kind of nibble on you, and you're like, ooh. They're little, teething. <laughs> little baby teeth are sharp. <laughs> yeah. When he was uh, sleeping in the crate, he would constantly cry, and I yeah. get it. He wanted to be, you know, with you or with us on the bed, and... I felt bad that later, looking back at that, that we didn't just let him come to the bed. Yeah. Oh, look at this Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh. He's so cute. <laughs> Bye. I think that was a Rottweiler, wasn't it? <laughs> a Rottweiler. Is that a Rotty? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Aww. 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 Uh, yeah, she's cute. Have uh, a good have one. Have a good one. How ironic is that? Yeah. Right, Wilder. You see, they follow me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but so then, um, slowly, I started to learn how to bond with Yanko. And at first, I was very much like, I will do the bare minimum. I will go on walks with him. Yeah. I didn't want to bond too much with him, too, because my mom was like, the moment you start bonding with him, that's it. You're going to, like, fall in love with him, and that's going to be your dog. And I kept thinking in the back of my mind, no, we're just taking care of him. Eventually, he'll go back to, to Paul. Right. I mean, even his name, Yanko. We didn't name yeah. Yanko. Yanko's name was given by Paul because he's a big car enthusiast. And ironically, yeah. <laughs> when he went to go get Yanko, he saw a Yanko Camaro, which is like a rare. fucking rare yeah. thing to see. And so he saw it as like an omen. Like he had, that's, that's his yeah. name, right? And so uh, my, my first big, like barrier to get over was just for me to be at ease i constantly i remember when we used to play with him like you and aj would easily just play with him without yeah. any problems but i was always very skittish like if he moved near me i was just like oh what is he doing what is he doing <laughs> and i see that with a lot of people that are afraid of animals or dogs they're just always very skittish to the movements right and i think that even makes yanko or any other dog or animal more skittish you know right. so it's weird like your own fear is what's causing it to be a worse situation. Right. 
And so I was like, okay, well, I got to get over that. And yeah. so then I think you were the one that told me like, oh, well, you should try to feed him. Yeah. And so we got these treats and I fed it to him. And then I felt the gentleness that he had, that it was mm -hmm. just his tongue. And he just kind of, you know, was being very gentle with me. And I was like, ah, this isn't so bad. <laughs> no. Right? <laughs> and so then uh, I started to get more acquainted with him. He started to sleep on in, in, in the bed. Yep. And in the bed, that also became a thing because he would constantly move in the middle of the night. And I'm a light sleeper. Like anything happens and I'm up. And he would move quite a bit during the night and he still does. You know, every now and then he'll wake me up. Mm -hmm. Freaking like today, he woke me up at one in the morning just to pee and poop. But it's fine. <laughs> it's cool. No worries. That, I'm, I'm night shift guard. I don't mind doing that. But so I was very skittish at first, but then I got used to it. And now I look back at that and think, man, the the bond that I missed out on because I'll right. see pictures sometimes of Yanko when he was a puppy he was adorable and so cute and I completely missed out on that yep <laughs> I mean no offense that's kind of good for me because <laughs> he is <laughs> no he is more of my he dog he is more of your dog yeah yeah um, no but, but you know that also did help me as far as like seeing that if you have a fear just conquer it go after right. it get over it and he helped me with that you know like you might hear that in movies and, and like you know you're parents friends family whatever tell you like yeah, yeah you know if a fear just get over it but it really requires you to step out of that and i think that's what made yanko and the way that we got him so like you have to face the fear because we didn't really have an option it just went from like day to night it wasn't like we prepped for it we didn't say all right well we're gonna get a dog soon and uh -huh. then we're gonna go see them and then we're gonna have but no it was just like night and day one right. day we didn't have him and the next day he was in the house all right let me get him water sorry because he is hot. Pinky. Can I'll you hold, hold that? It, hold it. Oh. I am the cameraman now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for those of you watching this, like, understand that there is no big crew behind this. It is literally Nelly holding a stick with an Insta360. She has a microphone, I have a microphone. She edits this thing. She's a, she's what I call a predator, mm. producer, editor, director, camera person. She's everything. Yeah. Well, you want more Yankee? Well, thank you for saying that. <laughs> um, you know, it I, it's important, I think, to tell these stories. You know, because yeah. dogs are a really big thing. I mean, they've always been a big thing, but I think that they're they're becoming a norm in our society. And so we do need to come together and find ways that we could create a very humble environment for them because yeah. they deserve it. Yeah. Think you want more? And I think just with our generation too, there we have a tendency to almost, well, not, not all of us, but there's a group of us that don't want kids. Like we don't want kids. Mm -hmm. We know that for a fact. and. Uh, having a dog kind of supplements that like wanting to nurture and care for something mm -hmm. but not having this massive responsibility not right. that having a dog isn't a massive responsibility but the other one is it's a human it's gonna yeah. talk back to you it's gonna be influenced by what you say by what you do <laughs> that's good that's it <laughs> well, no, I mean it's a huge responsibility because of the situation that the earth is in yeah um, and that's the scary thing too like with your with your little brother I'm constantly like okay how what advice can I give him because I'm right. still trying to figure it out, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know what advice I could possibly tell them as to like career-wise or whatever. It's, it's complicated. Life, life is always like, you know, you're always learning. <laughs> exactly. So when we were talking about the idea of this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, we were trying to think of like, where are we gonna shoot this? How are we gonna shoot this? And then, Morning. you know, just the way that you are, the way that you like to go on adventures and you don't like to be, indoors very much that's why you're chosen the path that you have yeah so we wanted the podcast to have that same kind of feeling you know to be outside in nature and go yeah. on adventures with your dogs go on walks make them be a part of your world yep you know i i mean that's important to me um, that was the reason the initial reason why i started the combine you know i wanted to do this indoor outdoor park in miami because miami has has great weather and also a lot of rainy days so a lot of the times you need to keep your dog active uh, you need to release their energy 
And at the same time, I think we're both multifaceted artists. Um, and so creating this interactive place for dogs and their humans was really what I was interested in, you know? Um, and then unfortunately COVID happened. So yeah. I pivoted to nutrition um, and I've learned a lot, but you know, what is important, I think to my, to me is more of that, making that bond with your dog. Right. Uh, that's something that I learned too while when, as we were raising Yanko was that he has so much energy and yeah. he, uh, he requires for you to like take him out and do things. And you see the difference. You look, he's pulling me right now. And <laughs> you know, in theory, he shouldn't be doing that, but it's because he's very excited. He, it's a new world for him. So he's smelling new things. Like if we try to walk him around the lake, he'll do it, but you could tell he's not as enthused yeah. by it. And when we travel, you know, that became a big thing. <laughs> when we started to travel, like at first, it was just like, oh, well, where do we want to go? Mm -hmm. And then now our vacations are like, well, where can we take Yinko? And it's yeah. not like a bad thing. It's not something that we're looking at it as a, like, oh crap, now we can't go there. It's like, no, bring on that challenge yeah. because we want him to be there. We want him to experience things. And I even felt a big difference <laughs> in the type of vacations that we would take. Remember, like, yeah. uh, we went to Atlanta and at the time we were doing more art stuff. So we were very much like going to venues and things that were more art related. Yeah. And then when we went with him, we decided, hey, you know what, let's do more like a hiking kind of thing. And to be honest with you, I enjoyed that a lot more. Yeah. You know? Look at this little guy. Look, look how he does these stuff. So here's another thing. I remember the first uh, hike that we went on, and they had these like metal uh, stairs. It was somewhere. Oh, yeah. In okay. Georgia. Yeah, yeah. It was in Georgia. I know where. We took him, and it was the waterfalls. He was terrified of going on those metal uh, yeah. stairs. And it's so crazy now. Every time I see him do any kind of stair now, he does like a pro. And that's the thing. You got to put any kind of training. You got to put time and effort into it. But you'll see the end result yeah. is more than worth it. This is a nice view. Yeah. So we are at Treetop Park. Yeah. We're in Broward, <laughs> not Miami-Dade County. Um, I was born and raised in Miami, but I'm not very... <laughs> How would I say? Pro Miami? Yeah. I'm not a I'm not that much of a fan of Miami. I think Miami I think it's because maybe you see also the potential of what it could be. Well, yeah, and that's what I was going to say like we we worked in public art for the first couple of years we moved back to Miami and you know, try to implement some change particularly for dogs. Um, dogs need to run. Dogs need a lot of space. You know, the little dog parks that are less than an acre, half an acre, that's not really enough for a dog. No. Um, part, uh, and not only one dog, we're talking about like neighborhood dog, like a, a neighborhood of dogs going to a small park. So, you know, yeah, I understand that there's a need for space, but I don't know. There's, you, you some, know what's a there's weird... some stuff that just is, makes me mad, like, you know, a linear park under a metro rail that gets millions of dollars. It was already a park. I grew up in that neighborhood. It was already a park. <laughs> it's uh, just like here, there's a very different concept of what it is to do design that is interactive with what's already there. Because uh -huh. like, for example, look at this park, right? So this is what Florida would look like, Right. you know? Yeah, yeah, there is a pavement here, I get that. But whenever there's a design for a park the first thing they do is like chop all the trees everything, yeah make everything flat and it doesn't make any sense and you're <laughs> in miami it, the sun is out there it is hot yeah you know it is hot right now and we're in the shade right but we're in what like i would say like we're in 80 something degree weather yeah because also in the earlier sun, in the morning it's yeah like, if you're in the sun what it'd feel like a hundred a hundred and when the humidity is like 110 <laughs> yeah so yeah you, know, you think about it, if you chop this all down now you don't have any shade. So you're gonna have right. to construct something to provide the shade when it yeah. already was there. Yeah, you have to maintain this. By no means, yeah, that's also another. Uh, no, but this provides a whole lot more than what you're spending on maintaining. This provides oxygen. It, it you know, cuts O2 emissions, you know, all the, yeah. the benefits that it has. And then visually too, I mean, look at this stuff. You know, it's, <laughs> uh, it's very, like yeah. if you're thinking also for the user experience, 
You know, you see, you don't see a lot of this in Miami. There's nope. very few places that actually have this, which is sad because again, the potential is there mm -hmm. or was there. And now, you know, that's taken away. Yeah. People that work in part departments need to go and experience what, a, what it is to have a dog, you know? Um, and yeah, there are different sizes. There's different levels of activity when it comes to like the breeds and stuff. But for the most part, it's space. They, they do require space. Play is an important part in the bonding of a dog, you and a dog. Yeah. Um, and it teaches your dog to trust you. Um, so play is quite an important aspect of dog ownership. And I think as you get older, you would want to play less. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the opposite. I'm like, let's, let's go, you know, let's, uh, let's do something active. Let's have fun. Um, I mean, that's another reason why we just, why I decided to do the podcast the way that we are doing it. Uh, because we also want to learn what, what would be the best place to live with your dog? You know, it was there something that you learned having Yanko that was like a misconception you had. I remember going uh -huh. to a lot of parties and a lot of different uh, situations where I was so worried about the dog. And now I'm just like, no, oh, they're, they're cool. I actually want to play with them. I want to pet them. Yeah. yeah. And they each have a different personality. Yeah. Whew. Man, it's hot. All right. Do you think you're... I think we're good. All right, everybody. Bye. It was fun, but it's hot. We need to get inside the car with some AC and some water. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to know more about our guests, read the show notes down below. Please hit the subscribe button if you liked us, and it would be even better if you would leave us a review. See you next Wednesday.